In preparing for this show, we spoke to 17 private bankers who have experience with business funding, traditional loan and mezzanine loan structuring, working capital expansion, term financing, and company acquisition. We have compiled tips and tricks from these experienced bankers, along with small business funding secrets we uncovered during our own research. Stay tuned to learn small business credit secrets and understand how to get your business funded fast if they're applying for a business line of credit, SBA loan, unsecured term loan, credit card, business acquisition loan, equipment financing, or merchant cash advance. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back to another edition of Sweetie Kiwi. How are you folks? <laughs> I am very happy to have you today. I'm very, I'm doing fantastic. How are you? I hope you are doing marvelous. Now, today we are talking about money. How to make money, how to, make money, how to borrow money. This is a very interesting topic that we were very enthusiastic in researching and, uh, and investigating and when we spoke to uh, 17 private bankers who helped us sort of get the nitty gritty of what, what, what it really takes to make money. Before we start, I just want to give a quick shout out to um, our millions of viewers and listeners and fans all over the world, specifically Mitchell Cochran in Alamuchi, New Jersey. Mitchell Cochran, thank you so much, sir, for your contribution, your help, and everything, and your uh, your the topic suggestion. Again, when we talk about contribution, we are only talking about feedback on the topic and uh, help in terms of choosing the right content for our audience here. <laughs> so, Alamuchi, New Jersey. Kit Lynch, Laurel Springs, New Jersey. Lily Evans in West Belmar, New Jersey. Thank you so much. Now, today, today's conversation is about funding your small business. There are various ways to finance your company, depending on the operational stage of the business, whether it is a startup, an established business, a growing company, a merger, or whether you're talking about a merger and, or acquisition. Now, finding financing in any economic climate can be challenging, right? Whether you're looking for startup funds, capital to expand, your, uh, to expand, or money to hold on through the tough times. Now, given our current state of affairs, securing funds is as tough as ever. Now, to help you get the money you need, we will be going back to a lot of uh, a lot of tips and tricks here. But we also want to give you, you know, the the idea. We want to explain to you first what small business financing is all about. Number one, let's talk about SBA loans. Now, SBA stands for the U.S. Small Business Administration. Now, the SBA works with lenders across the country to provide loans to small businesses. Now, the thing you have to understand is that the agency itself doesn't lend money directly to small business owners, right? Instead, what it does is it sets guidelines for loans made by its partner partnery lenders. You also have community development organizations and in some cases, micro lending institutions. Now, micro lending institutions, they might lend somewhere from a couple of thousand to fifty thousand dollars. So the SBA as a government agency reduces risk for lenders and makes it easier for them to access capital. So what they do is, you know, they basically provide collateral. And by doing that, they make it easier for small businesses to get loans, right? So you have the SBA loans or they come up with the competitive terms because they are uh, guaranteed by the, by the federal government. So they have uh, rates and fees that are comparable to, you know, to uh, uh, the you know, student loans, for instance. You have um, the SBA also has a counseling and education platform so some loans come with uh, continued support to help you the entrepreneur start and run your business the SBA loan also have unique benefits so you have lower down payments things like flexible overhead requirements and actually no collateral needed for some loans and that's that's wonderful now in terms of the amount we are talking about it can it can range from 500 to 
five million just to fund the business, right? And again, those loans are guaranteed by the SBA and they could be large, they could be small, and they have to be for business purposes, right? Including long-term fixed asset and operating capital. So fixed asset relate to things like equipment, you know, buying a car, a truck, this sort of like heavy duty equipment. Now, some loan programs set restrictions on how you can use the funds. So the, la the, 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 the first thing you want to do is uh, check with the your SBA approved bank when requesting the loan so they can actually uh, match you with the right loan for your business needs. You know, so they, you also have, you know, um, besides work and capital, you have things like seasonal financing, export loans, revolving credits and refinanced business debt. Right. This is kind of a really, really important. And now when I'm talking about fixed asset, as I said before, those are heavy duty, heavy duty um, equipment. But also you can also have real estate. You can also have if you're doing construction, this could also qualify as work as a fixed asset. OK, so this is this is in a nutshell what you need to know about the SBA. SBA program. Now, one thing that I also want to see here is that you can use an SBA loan for a variety of purposes, you know, including uh, starting up a business or acquiring one. You can do something called owner occupied real estate. You can do franchise financing. Let's say you want to open a, a McDonald's or, or Pizza Hut or I don't know. I'm just maybe using food franchises here, but <laughs> you get the idea, right? Fr you can finance your franchise with an SBA loan. You can finance inventory. You can refinance debt equipment. And in some cases, you can even use the money for improvements and renovation, right? So this is this is very important now. The, S, the loan, this sort of program, the SBA loan program has been in existence since 1953. And actually, this was the same year that the SBA was founded. So the SBA was founded on July 30th, 1953. And and basically for the last since then, since its creation, it has delivered over 20, 20 million loans, guarantees, counseling sessions, contracts and other forms of assistance to small businesses across the country right and those loans the agency has offered the loans to merchants through multiple financial institutions so the bottom line here is that SBA loans are th it, it, this is something that works they have been effective they work and you can apply for them if you qualify you know, for more info, you can go on the website, you know, on the, on the agency's website and learn more. But this is something that you can apply for that comes at a at a good rate. All you got to do is make sure that you meet the eligibility requirements. Right. And then you can also have an SBA partner, a lending partner in your area of residence or in your area of operation. We'll be right back right after this. Welcome back, folks, to another section of the Sweetie Kiwi. We're talking about small business financing today, and we really appreciate your presence here. We thank our millions of viewers and uh, and fans and listeners. Now, before in the first section, we talked about you know what is the uh, what an SBA loan is. Right now, I want to talk to you. I want to quickly talk to you about which SBA financing solution is right for your business. Because the SBA has several uh, funding alternatives here, and it's important to know which one uh, which one applies to your business. Now, there is one category called SBA Express Loan. Now, this type of loan has a, you know it's very good. It's a good source of long-term financing for working capital needs. Now, working capital, for those who, if you are not the first in accounting, working capital is just, you know, your, your total current asset minus your total current liability. So that's the money you need to operate in the short term. So total, total current assets minus total current liabilities. And asset or liability, the, the, the term here is one year. So 
to be eligible for an express an SB exp express loan, uh, you have to use the proceeds for business, right? And the business needs to be older than 18 months. So you, the business has to be in existence at least one and a half year before you can you can apply for this kind of loan. Now the owners should be should either be U.S. citizens or green card holders. Now you can use the money, you can use the cash for financing working capital needs or for buying equipment. Now loan amounts can range from three hundred fifty thousand dollars. Oh, sorry, three hundred fifty thousand dollars is actually the limit. Actually, so you can start from fifty grand to three fifty grand. So that's the range that the SBA is looking for this kind of uh, this kind of loan. Now they. If you have a loan up to 100,000, they don't require you to have any proof of income. So you just have to have a solid business plan and, and, and other evidentiary documents, but there is no requirement of proof of income. Now, loans above 100,000 requires at least two years of business and personal tax returns on all the principles that have more than 20% stake. Let me repeat that. If you are going to apply for a loan above 100,000, make sure you have the last two years of business and personal tax returns on all the principals that have who have more than 20% stake in the business. Now, the rate structure is very uh, is very simple. Uh, the rates actually adjust quarterly, and this depends on a prime rate could be the wall street journal prime rate and this rates usually vary from prime plus one to prime plus four i will get into that sort of uh, definition in, in another show but let's just for now let's just understand that the the rates are variable now the typical loan amortization you can repay the loan over seven years maximum right so the typical loan term is around three to five years but there are there is an option to roll over up to seven years depending on your you know the strength and the strength of your application package and also how much was lent, was lent to well that was lent to you so for instance if you if you borrow up to 350 the lender in some cases might accept that you repay the the money over seven years so number one, SBA express, express loans. Number two, SBA 7A loans. There's something called 7A loans. Now, the loan benefits here for this type of loan is that it is an excellent source for flexible use of proceeds, right? So you have, there are no balloons or calls and it provides highly leveraged financing. Now, in terms of eligibility, it's those businesses that are eligible include merchants, business and the use of proceeds all need to be eligible now the owners need to be again u.s citizen or green card holders right now foreign aliens can qualify if they own less than 49 percent of the business so as long as an Amer as long as an american citizen or a green card holder is the majority equity holder everything is fine the sba will approve this loan the, so the SBA will work with the lending institution to approve the loan now the use of proceeds you can use the, the, the proceeds to finance long and short-term assets used in the normal business operations so acquisitions and refinances are eligible also that's a very important right and this can also include real estate and business goodwill so you know the working line of credits go all the way to 100,000 so if you want to have uh, line, lines of credits up to 100,000 100, that's also possible now the loan amounts the maximum amount you can get under this program again the program here is the SBA 7A loans is 5 million so the loans require the last three years of business tax returns you want to have a real estate schedule if applicable and two years of personal tax returns and again you want to have this the personal tax returns 
are applicable to all principals having more than 20% stake. What is the rate structure, the interest rate structure? Now rates adjust again quarterly and index on the Wall Street Journal prime rate. So the typical rates here range from prime plus one to prime plus two. The, in terms of amortization of the loan, it usually depends so that the loan term ranges from seven to 25 years. Remember, we're talking here about 20, uh, the maximum amount being 5 million. So the loan amortization period is longer than in than what we had in the first category, right? So you have seven to 25 years to repay fully the loan and the loans are fully amortized and there are no balloons or calls. The third category of loan when it comes to SBA is something called SBA 504 financing. Now 504 financing has benefits. Uh, the, the, the number one benefits here is that it, it is an excellent long term fixed rate product. So here we don't have any kind of, uh, you know, rate being, you know, being adjusted quarterly or being indexed off the Wall Street Journal prime rate, right? It is a fixed interest rate. And to be eligible, you want to have the small business must occupy at least 50% of real estate asset and comply with federal business size standards. Now, uh, if you go on the SBA website, there is a long list, actually not, not that long. It's it's pretty short list. There is a clear list of the what they mean by business size standards in terms of the staff, the headcount of your staff, the the uh, revenue requirements. So there are some thresholds that define what is, you know, what is eligible as a, a small business and what is what is not eligible. So the business cannot have in this SBA 504 financing scheme, the business cannot have sales over 6 million or employ more than 500 employees. And those are the requirements as of the date of this show. Now the use of proceeds, you can use the money to finance long-term assets like real estate or equipment. So really it's uh, it, 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 it's very, very, very uh, easy. Now the typical loan amortization you can have um, it, it ranges from five years if you have the money all the way to 25 years so it is very very uh, they are flexible in terms of the the amortization the loan amount the loan amount itself I, I haven't talked about the loan amount now the loan amount can go all the way to four million but it depends it depends on where you live it depends on where the business operates but it can go all the way to, to four millions we've seen cases where um, the SBA had approved a 504 financing scheme where the the borrower was able to raise ten million dollars but again this wasn't a specific case in California so again go back to your lender and discuss the limits with the lender and also make sure that you double check the SBA list of uh, eligibility requirements on their website when preparing the application package all right we'll be right back right after this welcome back folks welcome back we're talking about money today we are talking about ka-ching 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 <laughs> but not your own ka-ching we're talking about somebody else's ka-ching <laughs> the sb or the lender so we have had we spoke to 17 private bankers who have experience with business funding, traditional loan, and mezzanine loan structuring, work and capital expansion, term financing, and company acquisition. So in this show, we are distilling, we are sharing with you the tips and tricks from these experienced bankers, along with small business funding secrets we uncovered during our own research. So. We talked in the first the first section of the show about SBA loans, whether they're right for your business. Now, I, I want to give you the general eligibility criteria for SBA 7A loans. Now, the, the same applied, uh, the, the same criteria applied 
overall to other types of loans that the that the SBA um, uh, oversees, right? So I spoke about SBA 504 financing and SBA express loans. The criteria for SBA 7A loans are overall give or take applicable also to the other to the other um, other types of loans in terms of uh, you know revenue requirement in terms of nationality green car that kind of stuff citizenship that kind of stuff right so let's get into it the first eligible eligibility blah, 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 blah. eligibility <laughs> here for the um oh well what i can hear you oh yeah yeah we we need to quickly give a shout out to our fans Oh yeah, we love our fans and we love our our listeners and viewers all over the world. And um, this is an opportunity for us to say thank you. By the way, if you are listening to this show, if you just join us or if you've been listening to us since the beginning and you think this show is adding value to your, to your life, to your business, to your career, consider subscribing to our channel. This is very important for us. It helps us boost our stature in the uh, in, uh, in the algorithm in, in, in the search engine results we uh, subscribe to our channel like the content share it and also comment give us your your take about small business financing your your uh, experience your your history with the SBA uh, loans tell the rest of the sweetie Kiwi community what you think of a uh, small business financing in general we really we would really appreciate that we want to give a fan shout out to Riz Thomas. Riz, Riz Thomas in Crown Point, New Mexico. Thank you, sir. Benny Price in Playas, New Mexico. Thank you, man. And Kaylee Campbell in C. Bonito in New Mexico. So Riz Thomas, Crown Point, New Mexico. Benny Price, Playas, New Mexico. And Kaylee Campbell in C. Bonito. In New Mexico. Thank you so much for your support. Thank you so much for your nice words. We love you. We love your families. Stay marvelous. Now, eligibility requirements for the 7A loan program comprise several key characteristics, right? Not only about the business, but also the owners. Now, the according to the SBA, eligibility is really based on how the company earns its revenue. You know, where it operates, and the background of its owners. So the, the, the SBA does not specifically list companies that are eligible to receive 7 loans, but what they do is they give you a list of industries that are not eligible. And they also give you some kind of basic requirements to be eligible for assistance. For instance, the businesses, the, you know, the business must operate for profits. The business must be small as defined by the SBA. Yeah. The business must be engaged or proposed to do business in the United States or its possessions. The business must have reasonable invested equity. In other words, you must put some money yourself first in the company. The business must use alternative financial resources, including personal assets, before seeking financial assistance. So you can't just have a company and all of a sudden you have a company you haven't put any money in the company and all of a sudden you just want the FBA uh, do you want the you want the SDA to did I say the the NBA or the FBA? <laughs> the NBA. Not really sure the NBA will uh, give you some money here. <laughs> no the SBA. The uh, you can't just have a business and not do anything at all and not put in any cash in the business and accept and expect the business except uh, expect the SBA right to lend you money or an SBA lender to lend you money it doesn't go that way so you have to have reasonable invested equity you need to use alternative financial resources including personal assets you should be able to able, you should be able to demonstrate a need for the loan proceeds and you should use the funds for a sound business purpose right and on top of that it's also very important and this is a biggie guys this is a biggie folks a biggie you should not be delinquent on any existing debt obligations to the u.s government so you can't ask the u.s government to give you money if you owe the government money right it just makes sense so this is something that you need to pay attention to now 
you can use you can use your, uh, your, your 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 you can use the loan proceeds to do all the things that we talked about before you know buy equipment um, you know expand that kind of stuff of course you can't use the money for illegal illegal acts right so you can use the money to purchase equipment machinery furniture fixtures supplies of material you can use the uh, you can use the kaching to purchase real estate including land and buildings you can use the money to construct a new building or renovate an existing one you can use the cash to establish a new business or assist in the acquisition operation or expansion of an existing business you can use the money to refinance existing business debt under certain conditions and we'll talk about that later on now there are something that you need to really know I was speaking earlier about what is considered inappropriate or what is considered uh, banned in a in an SBA loan application now you cannot use an SBA loan to refinance existing debt where the funder is in a position to sustain a loss and the SBA will take that over loss through refinancing let me break, let me just repeat that you cannot use the SBA loan to refinance existing debt where the funder the person the, the lender is in is in a position to sustain a loss and the SBA will take over that loss through refinancing remember that the SBA guarantees all loans that go through its program right so the SBA is the lender of last resort so whatever loss that the the bank that you're taking the money from if there is a loss there that that loss the bank will pass it over to the SBA and the SBA doesn't want that you cannot use an SBA loan to affect a partial change of business ownership or a change that will not benefit the business you cannot use a loan backed by the SBA to permit the reimbursement of funds owed to any owner including any equity injection or injection of capital to continue the business until the SBA backed loan is dispersed you cannot use an SBA loan to repay delinquent state or federal withholding taxes or other funds that should be held in trust or escrow. So you can't borrow. You can't borrow from the U.S. government to repay the U.S. government to you to repay an existing debt owed to the U.S. government. For instance, a tax a, a tax obligation. You can't use the, uh, an SBA loan for a purpose that is not considered to be a sound business purpose as determined by the SBA again this is very this is very this is common sense right you can't borrow for something illegal and the last thing here is that you know folks the reason why I'm just I'm just stressing this I'm emphasizing this this step is you want to know what you can't use the uh, an SBA loan for even before you you, you think about applying even before you contact the bank and if you are unsure whether or not you, your anticipated use of funds is allowed, check with your SBA approved funder. They'll be, they, they will tell you, they will tell you whether or not your, your, you know, your uh, anticipated use of funds is just legal and allowed. Right? We'll be right back right after this. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back, folks, to uh, this beautiful show. We are having fun. I hope you are having fun. Are you having fun? <laughs> this is great. We are talking about kaching. How to make kaching? How to borrow some kaching from the federal government? Specifically, we are talking about small business credit secrets. We are giving you tips and tricks. Tips and tricks to get your business funded fast after applying for a business line of credit an SBA loan, an unsecured term loan, a credit card, a business acquisition loan, equipment financing loan, or merchant cash advance. I want to talk to you now very quickly about what a business line of credit is. You know, in the first, in the first section, we talked about an SBA loan and all the eligibility requirements, what you can use the money for, what you can't use the money for, that kind of beautiful stuff, right? Now, let's talk quickly about a business line of credit. Now, a business line of credit is a key component of managing your small business 
find us in help right now uh, unlike a business loan a lot of credits it, it acts in a different in a different manner it acts as ready cash in times of need let me repeat that a line of credit acts as ready cash in times of need so you only just want to tap into that sort of uh, the, so, you know you want to tap into that liquidity pool in times of need so it is similar to a business credit card if you will right so a line of credit can be a business lifeline in terms of emergency or even seasonal cash flow tapping so if you have you know you know if your business is seasonal let's say you know it's the holidays and you just need cash to buy uh you know a humongous amount of of of, of, uh, of items so you can sell and make money but the problem is that you know you're kind of a uh, you know you're kind of experiencing some some temporary cash flow problems right so customers haven't paid you yet so you have you need extra cash this is when you can use a business line of credit now you know uh, this line of credit can be seen as a cross between a business loan and a business card right so you know like a business loan the 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 line of credit is unsecured right so what it does is it provides business finance business funding that you can use for general business expenses the thing with a, a line of credit is there is no lump sum disbursement right so the business owner you as the owner you borrow only what is needed and you only pay interest on the amount borrowed so it is like a credit card right so the amount of capital available to draw down from and the payments are revolving and usually they are you know usually the, the the balance you have the limits you have all those things are subject to annual review so interest will begin to accrue when you when the money is drawn or borrowed and interest only applies to those amounts right so you apply to a business line of credit and the funder will set a limit the bank will set a limit on the amount you may borrow now you can use a business line of credit for several things it is a very flexible in comparison to other loan types it is a very flexible option if you if you will in most cases you know the 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 uh the bank is not even going to ask you the particular use of the loan they don't really care as long as you have the you have a, a good a good credit score the the operational soundness of your business is uh, it, the, your business is operationally sound you are showing a good profile in terms of a uh, inflow of cash versus outflow of cash that is good so the flexibility the fact that the bank does now the, the the fact that the bank does not ask you what you will be using the money for that flexibility allows you to use a business line of credit almost as a safety net or even think about it almost as an insurance policy right against gaps in cash flow or seasonal laws in business again all businesses go through go through seasonal laws right and the bottom line here is you want to have a mitigation strategy against those dips in flows those dips in liquidity right so um according to the sba actually some companies even use a lot of credit to help increase capacity in times of un unexpected spikes in demand remember what i told you earlier about uh, christmas the christmas season right so you have you have a sudden spike in demand during the holidays or i don't know during uh, specific period something unexpected right so you don't have the money you haven't planned for it but you see a business opportunity you see some cash some kaching to be made and the best way to really respond to that demand is by tapping into the liquidity pool offered by the line of credit and use that cash to produce right and the thing is that it is ready ready cash that is flexible and there is no cost to maintain it so it is a solid business practice to open and maintain a business line of credit i would recommend that and, and let me just repeat it i believe it is a solid business practice to open and maintain a business line of credit you have you have nothing to lose you have nothing to lose as long as you don't use it no interest accrues right and you only use it when you need to use it now 
the uh, the one thing I, I want to talk about here also is that establishing and maintaining a line of credit, you should sort of consider it. You should see it as an operational goal, similar to if you have to, you know, it's just like a manufacturing process or hiring people for your business or any kind of essential business operation function, right? So this is very important because unlike a business loan, a line of credit is an asset that is part of your business. Therefore, it is important to understand how to acquire access to a line of credit and maintain the line of credit. Right now, uh, I mean, I know I, I, I can hear people asking me, well, should you establish a business line of credit? Is this the right thing to do? And again, I think I've answered that question indirectly earlier, and I'm going to repeat it here again. In most cases, the answer is yes, yes, you should establish a business line of credit. Yes, 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 and yes. And this is particularly important if you are a small business with a limited operating history let's just let's just you know you're just a startup if you are a startup you've been in business for one year or two years right so you have a limited operational history you want to have you want to establish a business line of credit because you never know what will happen right small business owners know the business isn't always smooth sailing things happen life goes right unexpected or often unwanted surprises are part of the part of doing business those things might be unfortunate but they are part of taking risks they are part of doing business so you may not be able to prevent unforeseen and unexpected expenses but you can be prepared for them you can have cash readily available that you can tap into right so you don't know where the big opportunity is right because i i want to I want to clarify here that I'm not a I'm not only thinking in terms of uh, I'm not pessimistic but I'm just saying that you can have you know unexpected things happen on the negative side of the spectrum but you can also have positive things happening on the other side of the spectrum of the operational spectrum so an opportunity a big opportunity could arise to expand your business but if the opportunity presents itself You'll be able to capitalize on it immediately if you have a business line, a line of credit, right? So uh, another thing that also, I also want to mention here is that using a business line of credit can really improve your credit profile. It, it, this is a biggie, folks. This is a biggie. Let me repeat that. Using a business line of credit can significantly improve your credit profile. Now, a lot of economists agree that establishing a, a line of credit is a great way to build your business credit profile because it allows you to limit your borrowing to manageable amounts and you can make pay payments on time and pay off quickly. So you can pay off quickly the, the, uh, the amounts borrowed and if you pay off quickly, that can dramatically enhance your business credit profile. And if you have a stronger, if you have a stronger credit profile, this will, I mean, what will happen here? Think about it. Think about it. Think about it. Having a lower credit, having a stronger credit profile will almost lead always to what? Lower cost of borrowing. And you have access to more capital. So this is a, this is a double win, a triple win, a quadruple win. Right? 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 Boom! 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 This is exactly what I'm talking about here. We want to have a stronger credit profile so we make more money. We have a lower cost of borrowing. In other words, the interest rate is low. The conditions are better. You are treated like a VIP. Think about that, right? So instead of eating fast food, you're eating filet mignon. <laughs> right? So you have access to more capital. You can expand your business. You become the caviar of businesses. <laughs> so this is, this is, I'm just trying to paint a picture here. So where you understand that having a business line of credit and using it correctly, using it responsibly, not, mis not, mis not misusing the funds can help you 
have a lower cost of borrowing, have access to more capital, and have better financing conditions, of course. Treat your borrowing responsibly and you will be rewarded. This is very important, right? So before I kind of uh, you know close th this section here, just want to quickly. Now, there's one thing that a lot of people ask me, you know, is a business line of credit the same thing as a business credit card? No, a business line of credit and a business credit card are not the same thing. However, there are similarities, right? There are different ways to access credit. Both are very different ways to access credit. In general, interest rates for credit card can be considerably higher than a business line of credit. Also, if you wish to get cash with your credit card, whoo, 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 <laughs> you are going to pay a higher fee. I'm talking about a humongous fee humongous fee and or a higher interest rate for a cash advance so credit card cash advance could be a killer but a business line of credit that's cash that's readily that's cash readily available and one thing you also want to think about is that credit card require rigid monthly repayment schedule with a business line of credit you may be eligible to arrange a custom repayment schedule that fits your business cycle. You know, if you are maybe let's say you have more money coming in coming in, in the business around the holidays, around September, October, November, December, you know, and where whereas in the first eight months of the, uh, of the year, business is kind of slow, you can negotiate with your bank and have a monthly you know a custom repayment schedule that fits that cycle of eight months of nothing coming in and four months of millions coming in right so that's the things you want to think about when comparing a business line of credit and a business credit card we'll be right back right after this Welcome back, folks, to another edition of Sweetie Kiwi. Actually, it's another section of the same show, Sweetie Kiwi. You know, we are doing marvelous. I hope you are doing fantastic. If you appreciate the content so far, please consider giving us a big, 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 <laughs> big like. We really, we love likes. And if you give us a like, we'll give you a love back. <laughs> please consider subscribing to our channel. Uh, we really love the kind of content we produce and um, we want you to be in the loop whenever we just drop a new program we do this every day comment below give us your experience about small business financing share the intellectual wealth with the rest of the community share like subscribe and if i haven't said it before this program is ad supported so consider watching our ads so the the team the production team will have the resources to continue to, you know, doing an investigation we'll continue producing the show and giving you free content now before we jump into how to quickly get a lot of credit let me first just give a quick shout out to david watts in east middletown new york <laughs> David, we love you. Thank you. Thank to you and your family. Gabby Rally in Bay Shore, New York. Layla Davis in Jefferson Heights, New York. So David Potts, Gabby Riley, Layla Davis in East Middletown, Bay Shore, and Jefferson Heights in the great state of New York. Thank you so much. How to quickly get a lot of credit. Now, in the last section I have established, I was explained to you that a business line of credit is actually a good thing. As long as you use the money responsibly, as long as you only use it for a good purpose, a business purpose, an operationally sound purpose, you are good to go. You are good to go. Now, let's just talk about how to quickly get a line of credit. First, prepare your company. 
to apply for a lot of credit. You want to set a goal. Set a goal when you apply for your line of credit, right? So nine months away, 12 months away. So once you determine your time horizon, follow the rules below to greatly enhance the likelihood of getting your line of credit. This is very important now. Your business line of credit is scored from zero to 100. In some country, in some states, uh, for instance, in Nevada, in Wyoming, in Arizona, some lenders go all the way to 125. But in general, your business credit profile will be from zero to 100, with 75 being considered excellent. That's you know in the A zone there, you know the B plus A zone. Now you want to pay your bills in line. So before you apply, there are things you have to do. And that's what I'm that's, that's that's what I'm telling you now. So let's say you want to apply for a lot of credit in three, six months, right? So start paying your bills on time. This is a must for any type of credit, right? You want to manage bill payment as as you know an automatic process. You want to pay, you know, the bills on time and you want to check your credit history. You know, you want to look into your files at the credit agencies and make sure that the data about you there is accurate, about your company is accurate. Refrain from opening credit accounts. Don't always, you know, shop around and just, you know, apply for credit. And, you know, again, here I'm talking about credit in virtually any form because anytime you apply for credit, again, the form doesn't matter. An inquiry is entered into your credit profile. And we all know that inquiries lower your credit score. Remember that credit inquiries lower your credit score. And it, you know you can find out right now by contacting Experian, TransUnion, and Equifax just to know how many inquiries you have on your business credit, uh, credit score. So don't do that now. Another thing you wanna do is you wanna pay down the existing credit accounts because this is an important factor, an important factor in deciding whether or not to grant you, to grant your business a lot of credit will be how much of available credit you are using. So if you have, you know, say if you have maxed out all your other credit accounts, you will have a strong probability of being denied, right? I mean, don't get me wrong here. Having a credit account is a good thing, right? I'm not saying it's not a, it's a bad thing because the bottom line here is that having credit account shows that you are credit worthy that financial other financial lenders have trusted you in the past or are still trusting you but you need to bring down your balances so that you're not overextended on existing credit accounts so those are this is the sort of a you know nitty-gritty the, the little things you need to do before even considering you know, having a applying for a, credit, a line of credits. Now, once you have done that, after three, six months, you want to organize your paperwork, right? You want to organize uh, your corporate financial statements because it's all about money, folks, right? It's all about money. Before a, a lender advances funds to you, they want to make sure you are operationally and financially sound. And I am talking about your bank statements, your profit and loss statements, also called income statements. Some lenders will want to see your balance sheet, your company's balance sheet, sometimes called the statement of asset and liabilities or the statement of financial position. They would want to see your business tax return, your personal tax return, right? Now, again, this is a little bit similar to the requirements of the uh, lenders want for an, uh, an SBA account, right? SBA accounts, SBA loan, right? Now, there are other requirements. To, I mean, for so the paperwork is that now, what are the requirements? So, on one end, you have the, the, the paperwork that you need to submit. Now, I want to tell you a little bit about the requirements. Now, to qualify for a business line of credits for from any funder now the conditions are the conditions vary from funder to funder but in general here because we are focused on the average here to qualify for a business line of credit you typically need to show that you have a credit score 
of 580 or above. So here I'm talking about your personal, you as the entrepreneur, you as the business owner, you need to have a personal FICO score of 580 or above. Now this is important to maintain because if you, especially if you have a small a startup, if you have a young business, it's important that you maintain a strong credit score because when banks look at your profile or your business profile, they also look at your personal profile because the business is so young, they got to have something else because they're thinking if there is a problem, if there is a big boo-boo, they got to go back to you, right? To, you are the person who is going to make them, like, like if the business can't repay the loan, you are going to be the one paying the loan. You got to be a, the company has to be at least 12 months in business. So funders, financial institutions, will almost always require that you have been in business for at least one year before they extend to you a business line of credit. Okay, this is important because they want you to establish some kind of a operational seniority. So, so they want to have some kind of uh, you know financial flows, cash flows, a history of, of cash flows so they can analyze the soundness of your business model. They want you to have a minimum minimum requ revenue requirements of ten thousand average every month, right? Now, the the ten k figure here is a guideline, right? This may vary from founder to founder. It depends on um, it depends on your location, your state. For instance, in some areas in California, it, it, it it's, it's more. In some areas in Wisconsin or Nevada or New Mexico, the 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 minimum the minimum revenue requirements are lower. Another requirements for a business line of credit is collateral. Now, some funders, some financial institutions or lenders may wish to see your ability to pledge short-term assets. So they are trying to cover their own back here. They're all trying to cover their own, they're trying to hedge their own risks here. So they might want you to pledge for instance, you know, what is short-term assets? One very, one very important short-term asset is accounts receivable, right? Customers receivable, or they might want you to pledge inventory, for instance, or notes receivable. So they would be in a position to get, get you the cash you need if you actually pledge those, uh, those short-term assets, also called current assets. Also, you got to make sure you have to make sure that there are no major, you know, negative credit events, things like bankruptcies, tax liens, foreclosures. Those are just big no no's for the funders. Now, before we, you know, we talked about the requirements, the paperwork you have to get ready. You need to understand your credit needs, right? This is very important. You need to you need to assess and evaluate your own needs when applying for a loan. It's very important. You want to get money, right? Okay, George, you're looking for some kachin. Get money is an important, if not the ultimate goal here. But you have to understand why you need the money, how much you need, and what will it cost you. Let me repeat that. You need to understand why you need the money, how much it will cost you. How much, I mean, how much money you need, right? And what it will cost you in terms of uh, fees, in terms of uh, uh, interest rates, in terms of uh, impact on your credit score, that kind of stuff. So there is a deep analysis that goes into applying for cash here. Even though a business line of credit is a good thing, there, there has to be a deeper analysis going into that. So what type of loan is best for you, right? You know, understand your needs and the amount of credit you need. Just keep in mind that a line of credit is a shorter term type of loan. So the the loan amounts are generally lower than conventional term loans, right? Because the bank is thinking this is a short term thing. This is this is not this. You know, I'm not going to commit to this business is over several years. This is for 12 months, 24 months. So the type of loan. The timing of the loan, 
when do you need the loan so you gotta plan ahead right you plan ahead so you get the line of credit before you need one it's always advisable to have cash before you need it because usually when you need cash and you don't have it it's already late when you need the cash it's usually during an emergency or if you spot a great business opportunity right so if you see some some spike in demand the demand is not waiting for you it's not waiting for two months before you can satisfy that demand because while you are getting the, if you don't have the cash ready if you are now rambling to to gather your paperwork and contact the bank guess what your competitors are eating your dinner your rivals are eating your dinner they your rivals with, with, with the deeper pockets, they are in your dinner. They are taking care of the, those customers. And you are at a loss. You will be at a loss. So plan things ahead. All right. Another thing, shop for rates. So as with any type of small business loan options, you got to know the cost of borrowing. You want to you want to look at things. You want to study this thing. You want to you want to become you want to have a Ph.D in studying things like APR, fees, loan fees, and other financing conditions, get a PhD in that category because, you know, the, the, the cost can be a lot. The cost can be, can be a killer. Let's say you are applying for 50,000, 50,000 credit line. Even a difference of 1% is a big or 2% is a biggie. So if you shop for APRs and fees and, and other funding features, you have the ability. And again, this is very, this is very, this is very easy to do, right? You can do this online. There are a lot of uh, what, you know, what I call uh, loan aggregators. You have those websites that, that, that provide reviews and comparison, that kind of stuff. You have apps, you know, that you can use those tools to know the best APR for your company. And now, remember that if you also have a good relationship with your bank, try them first. Because your bank, you know, chances are your bank, your bank knows you very well. They've seen movements in, in and out of your account. They know your business. They probably know what kind of business you are. They have, they have had a, a long business relationship with you. It is in their interest to keep you as a customer. So you will get your best deal with your own bank, always. We will be right back right after this. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back, folks. We are talking about something very extraordinary, something very interesting here. We're talking about how to get some ka for your business, how to get some cash, how to move ahead, how to make more money. But more specifically, we, we have spoken to 17 private bankers who have experience with business funding, traditional loan and mezzanine loan structuring, work in capital expansion, term financing and company acquisition. So what we've done is that, and this is for those who just joined us, we have compiled tips and tricks from these experienced bankers along with small business funding secrets we uncovered ourselves during our own research. And in, and in this show, we've talked so far about SBA loans. We've talked about business line of credits. Now, I want to talk to you about equipment financing. Now, equipment financing can be an invaluable asset to a business owner, right? If you have machinery or equipment that you own, you can turn that into capital you need to help your business grow. And how does it work? Now. Equipment financing is a type of small business loan that you use to purchase business equipment like computers, vehicles, machinery, you know, or any kind of business equipment. So you, you, you what you do is, and this works in a brilliant way. So you use the new equipment as collateral for the loan, making equipment financing a smart way to preserve on hand cash. Think about it in terms of, this is kind of similar to a mortgage, right? So you buy, you, you, you lend, you borrow money to buy something, 
and you use that asset as collateral so you kind of uh, you kind of have uh, you can preserve your own cash all right now to qualify for loan to you know to equipment financing the qualifications are virtually similar as any other types of small business loans so lenders will consider your you as the business owner will consider your personal credit score the length of time you've been in business the company cash flow so that's inflow and outflows and your repayment history right now you know nonetheless one of the benefits of equipment financing is that you get the equipment that you are financing as collateral so you have it the same way i was talking earlier about a mortgage you actually live in the house right that you are financing so you know the beauty of this is that is that because you are using the equipment that you are financing as collateral you do not tie up other collateral or free cash flow to make needed equipment purchases now how does equipment financing really work for small businesses and across the united states and canada the the the, the process is pretty similar now it's always advisable to talk to your lender but this is how it works across the u.s and canada for many small businesses you can find us up to you can find us equipment up to 100 percent of the value of the equipment right so this is unlike the the mortgage analogy that i used earlier where you have to put a down payment here you can find us up to 100 percent of the value of the equipment now most lenders will will specify the term of the loan equal to the expected useful life of the equipment this is very important now, now the, the term useful life is an accounting and tax concept that basically t tells you in general how long the authorities in this case the irs and the and the accounting guideline setters think an asset is useful for for example most computers and software have an expected useful life of three to five years for trucks or other long-term machinery is from five i'm sorry it's from seven to ten years right so the interest rate for equipment financing vary they, they vary greatly i mean of course it depends on a lot of stuff right it depends primarily on the credit worthiness of the individual owner the asset being purchased the health of the business the location of the business the the uh, the the length you know how long the business has been uh, has been operating that kind of stuff the the interest rates also vary based on the economic environment we're in right so if we are in a booming in a growth environment chances are you are getting rates that are they'll be high right so th th those rates vary you know we've seen in our research for the for this show we've seen rates ranging from five percent to 25 percent sometimes even 30 percent so this is why again it's very important to shop around i want you to become a phd a phd in rate shopping in in shopping for apr in fees and other funding scenarios now let me just kind of quickly tell you what are the strengths and weaknesses of equipment financing now the pros the pros pros of equipment financing we have a fast turnaround time to get approved the application process for most lenders is very simple you can conserve and present and preserve free cash flow and you can use the equipment as collateral right so fast turnaround simple application you can preserve free cash flow you can use the you can use the money for other stuff and you can use the equipment as collateral the cons here the cons the weaknesses of equipment financing is that the loan term may outlive the equipment useful life and you may have unfavorable fiscal consequences because you would have limited deductibility right so if you have a limited deductibility that means that your income 
is going up and thus your tax your tax bill will also go up right so the loan term like so for instance you know the loan term may be uh maybe 10 years but after seven years you realize that the equipment is just is broken so you still have to pay the loan but you have no no money being generated by the by the machine to repay the loan so you have a gap there and that also is you know that translates into the tax side of things where you know basically you have you cannot you cannot uh, deduct depreciation expense anymore out of uh, on your tax returns so your income is going up and your tax bill is going up right we'll be right back right after this don't go anywhere Welcome back, folks, to uh, another section of Sweetie Kiwi. I'm just very happy to have you around. I hope you are enjoying this show so far because I am enjoying it. I am doing marvelous, 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 marvelous. We are talking about ka-ching, ka-ching, ka-ching. We are talking about small business, small business financing, right? Because as a small business, you don't have the, the billions of dollars that Apple has or Google has or Alibaba or Facebook, right? Sometimes things are tight. You need to find cash. So what we've done is we have spoken to 17 private bankers, folks who have extensive experience with business funding, traditional loan and mezzanine loan structuring, working capital expansion, term financing, and company acquisition. And what we've done is after speaking with them, we have compiled tips and tricks from these experienced uh, bankers along with small business funding secrets we uncovered ourselves during our research. So we are just giving you here a few tips and tr tricks that will help you raise money fast and boost your own bottom line. So I've talked to you about equipment financing. Now I want to talk to you about the benefits the benefits of equipment financing. I know I spoke earlier about the pros and cons, but I, now I, I really want to dig deep and spend more time on the on the benefit, the, the big pros of equipment financing. Because believe it or not, a lot of multimillionaire entrepreneurs are using equipment financing to to to, to you know to, to get ahead, to stay ahead, especially in a globalized environment when you are competing with uh, people, with entrepreneurs, not only in Kansas, in California, but also in China, South Africa, Nigeria, Brazil, you know, uh, Lithuania, France. This is a global, global marketplace. And you need to have, once and for all, the best tools, including financial tools at your disposal so you can win. Because we want you to be a winner. A winner. Speaking of winners, we want to give a, a, a big shout out to our fans who are winners. We have uh, Cameron Miller in Four Oaks, North Carolina. Cameron, thank you so much for supporting the show. Thank you for the comments. Thank you for the, uh, for the encouragement. We really appreciate it. We acknowledge Jamie Collins from One Cheesy. That's in North Carolina. And we have Alice Johnson in Franklinville, North Carolina. Cameron Miller, Jamie Collins, Alice Johnson, in North Carolina, the beautiful state of North Carolina. We love y'all and we love your family. What are the benefits of equipment financing? Really sort of go deep here, you know, and give you several, several items that you need to, to pay attention to. Now, um, for the viewer and the listener, if you are enjoying this show, just want to quickly let you know that we appreciate if you would subscribe to our channel, we provide this kind of beautiful and, and, and relevant show every day on an area of topics. Subscribe to our channel and hit the, 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 the notification bell so you can be in the loop. Like this show, share with people who might need it, who would need this kind of content to get ahead in life and in business. Comment below, give us your info, your give us your insight about small business fin financing now 
equipment financing is one of the most popular loan options i mean i've said that before right a lot of uh, you know this is used by many small businesses as well as fortune 500 companies now let's sort of understand why let's take a closer look at why the equipment financing option is so popular number one you get up to 100 percent financing and there is no down payment again you know unlike most traditional loan types and financial institutions in equipment financing you're getting all the cash to buy the the the, the, the machinery you may be able you may be able to arrange 100 percent financing for your new equipment and the beauty of that is if you get equipment financing you can maintain cutting edge infrastructure right because this sort of financing often enables you to acquire more or better equipment than you could have without financing right imagine that right if you have to buy a new truck for instance and you don't have the the, the 40 grand or 50 grand or 100 grand to acquire the truck doing equipment financing will allow you to get the state-of-the-art the state-of-the-art truck with all the, the, the beautiful technology and all the efficiency and effectiveness all the built-in productivity productivity tools right so certain financing programs also allow you for technology upgrades and or replacement within the term of the lease or financing term this is very important another thing that is also good is that repairs may be covered so you if your truck breaks down or there is a problem with the truck or there is a problem with your computer or your server or whatever whatever it is some lenders will allow you to include in the in the equipment financing repairs so having new equipment generally means a fresh warranty and service contract so new new equipment can also save your company thousands in costly repair bills another another advantage here is that you can have more efficient operations with more productive staff with uh, with uh, a fast you know with a more streamlined value chain so when done correctly over the proper term that's five three years or seven years equipment financing can help your company actually run more efficiently and and because you have old you have less old or outdated equipment right you have less downtime you have you have productive right productive 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 you have productive staff and that's very critical right that makes a difference between you and your and your rival again if you have the best equipment you don't care what the rival is doing because you you know your equipment is very productive instead of working seven days uh, you know three 24 7 you're working maybe 18 7 or 18 5 so you could be playing nintendo while your your rival is working 24 7 you could be just enjoying some tapas or some caviar you know caviar whatever <laughs> think about that so more efficient operations is kind of key now another benefit of equipment financing is that it is it is a welcome source of cash infusion if your business is struggling with limited cash flow at a time when you really need to invest in some new or used equipment you can use equipment financing right to get the cash you need for some valuable machinery and you can use the kind of money you currently have for something else again i'm talking here about things like construction equipment right office and computer equipment landscaping equipment recreational and seasonal equipment industrial equipment restaurant equipment transportation equipment if you want to buy used equipment some lenders will allow you if you say listen in my line of business i don't need a new brand new equipment i don't need brand new equipment i need i can get i can get away with used equipment i can be fine i can be comfortable using secondhand equipment the lender might work with you on that 
Now, the loan amounts range usually range from 25k to 150k, and you can apply quickly and with, with minimal paperwork. Now, the business credit rating is weighed more heavily than your personal credit score. That's very important to know, right? So, if you want to, because think about it, you're not buying the equipment for yourself. You're buying the equipment for the business. So, from a risk mitigation, from a risk management perspective, the lender is weighing the business credit rating more heavily than your personal credit, you know, credit score. And usually, applicants will be required to submit two years of personal tax returns. The cost estimates of the equipment to be purchased and a financial plan. Again, financial plan will involve things like projection, revenue projections, uh, uh, in, uh, income statement prof, uh, performance, balance sheet, and that kind of good stuff. Right? If you have, if you have, a, if you have a business that is already established for several years. The process, the application process, might might go even faster. Specifically, if you, especially if your business credit score and the business tax returns provide sufficient ev evidentiary doc documentation, sufficient evidentiary information that tells the lender, okay, this is this is a great business. This is a great business model. You know, and again, the term might be around five months, seven months, or ten months, depending upon the equipment being financed. We will be right back, right after this. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> Welcome back, folks, to another section of Sweetie Kiwi, Sweetie Kiwi Show. We are talking about kaching, kaching, kaching. Money, 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 money. Now we're talking about how a small business can acquire, can, can get financing. We've talked about SBA loans. We've talked about equipment financing. We have talked about a business line of credit. Now we want to talk about something called a merchant cash advance. Merchant cash advance. Now if you just join us, if you don't know what we're talking about, just want to quickly tell you that we are talking about business financing, but we have prepared this show after speaking with 17 private bankers who have experience with business funding, traditional loan and mezzanine loan structuring, working capital expansion, term financing, and company acquisition. After speaking with those 17 luminaries, we have compiled tips and tricks. And along with small business funding secrets we uncovered ourselves during the research, we have prepared this show that we are currently offering you. So let's quickly talk about merchant cash advance. What is it? What is it? So a merchant cash advance is a, you know, it's the kind of scheme where you get a lump sum payment as a business owner you get a lump sum payment and you have to repay the lender from future credit card or debit card sales. Let me let, let me re-explain that. So a merchant cash advance is a scheme whereby a small business owner receives a cash advance from a lender and the business owner has to repay has to repay those proceeds from future credit card or debit card sales. So the term nowadays is commonly used to describe various merchant loan structures and most of them are usually most of them are usually short term in other words it's within 2 years and the, the cash the advanced cash has to be repaid through smaller regular payments versus monthly payments you know so the thing is that there are cases where a small business will repay like every day uh, 10 bucks or every two days 10 bucks to the merchant as opposed to making a lump sum payment at the end of the month so technically a merchant cash advance is not a loan it is a commercial agreement 
where the business owner sells their future credit card sales to a finance company or other third party. Let me give you a very simple, let me just, I'm going to break it down for you, right? Let's say you get a 10,000, a 10,000 credit card. Let me just use a, a very, a very, let's just assume for the, for the example, for this particular example, that in a year, you don't have 365 days, but you have 500 days. <laughs> yeah. It's just simpler for the math here. Imagine that we have 500 days in the year and you borrow, say, 5,000, you know, or 50,000 from a, a merchant, right? You get a cash advance of 50,000. Now, you can repay the, the, uh, the merchant on a daily basis. So you're repaying the merchant $100 every day so 50,000 divided by 500 you are repaying so you you would automatically set up the, uh, the your bank account so that there will be a debit of 100 bucks to your account every single day now in reality it's not it's not $100 because the merchant still need to be repaid with interest right so you probably will be paying 101 so you'll be paying 101 dollars and you'll have to pay 101 dollars over 500 days so basically what happens here is that in the end you would end up paying fifty thousand five hundred dollars so that's how it usually works now which business owners typically use the merchant cash advance now a lot of the the merchant uh, a merchant cash advance is is suitable for a wide area, an area of business owners. As long as you have a steady credit card or debit card business, you can apply for a merchant cash advance. For example, retail stores, right? Restaurants. Those are the most common type of businesses that use a merchant cash advance. To qualify for a merchant cash advance, you know, let me just sort of uh, understand let me just let me just uh, warn you that a merchant cash advance generally will cost you more than other types of business financing so you only want to use the you only want you only want to use this financing option in times of urgent cash need and when the you as the business owner has a reasonable expectation of repaying the loan in a short period of time right because the, the one of the benefits of this type of funding is that many lenders they have very 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 flexible standards you know they have liberal standards to qualify they don't they're not as they're not as strict with you with merchant cash advances as they are with you when it comes to a business line of credit or with credit cards so that means that if you have less than good credit rating right and you have a limited operational history and you have little or no collateral you can still qualify right so let's say for all uh, but in general in general here in general business owners who qualify for a merchant cash advance they usually have uh, a credit score of 525 to 575 the business has been operating for at least 18 months but we see an average of 18 to 24 months and an average in uh, annual revenue that's gross revenue of 150 to 250 thousand now again contact your your local merchant merchant to have to know more uh, to know more about a merchant cash uh, uh, blah, 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 blah. a merchant cash advance contact your local provider because depending on where you live right the amounts might be higher or lower so one of the things is that when applying for a merchant cash advance in addition to the requirements to qualify make sure that you provide things like you know credit card processing statements your driver's license avoided business check business tax returns your credit history, credit report, your bank statements, 
that kind of stuff. And, and because this is very important in terms of how to accelerate, how to speed up the, the application. Now, is there any, any uh, I always hear this sort of, uh, what? <laughs> oh, of course, of course. This is, the, this is the kind of stuff that, uh, and I was, I was going to talk about, I'm going to talk about it right now. Okay. So, so the question is, what is the difference between a merchant cash advance and a business cash advance, right? That's the question, right? Yes, I will talk about it. I can see that you want to have your ka real fast. <laughs> Woohoo! So, yeah. The short answer is yes. There is a difference between a business cash advance and a merchant cash advance. Now, the, the, the two terms are used, they are often used interchangeably. But the, the, the thing is that it depends on the lender. So you may experience that some lenders who offer business cash advance programs don't operate like traditional merchant cash programs, right? So they're not going to buy, you're not going to pay them back with a fixed percentage of your daily credit card sales, right? They will require you, those lenders, they will require you to repay the loan with the pre with the preset percent of your total sales. So rather than paying back paying a fixed percentage of the daily credit card sales, they might ask you to repay them with a set percent of your total sales. And the payment could be, for instance, on a monthly basis, right? So, but in most cases, it's very important to remember, in most cases, payments are made via wire, you know, wire transfer or ACH withdrawal. So, you know, you, you, you actually pay more when the business is good and less when the business is slow. So, there is actually no set terms here. Your payments actually fluctuate based on your sales. Okay? We'll be right back right after this. Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. I hope you're having fun. You are doing marvelous so far because I am doing marvelous. How are you? Welcome back to the show. Welcome back to a Sweetie Kiwi. We are talking today about small business financing. And the great thing is that a lot of people can do to get their money fast and move forward and crush the competition. Crush the competition. Crush the competition. Because with money, everything is possible, especially in business, right? So before I talk about, I, talk, I was talking earlier about merchant cash advance. Now, I'm going to give you the pros and cons of merchant cash advance. Now, before I, I can go into that, let me quickly give a fan shout out let me let me give a shout out to great people great viewers great fans and listeners people who support us who are giving us ideas giving us feedback we appreciate that by the way if you are listening to this show and you find the content very relevant if you find the content great or excellent or marvelous or anything good anything good (laughs) please consider subscribing Subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you will be kept in the loop anytime, whenever we have, whenever we drop something nice like this. If you have time, please like the like the show, share it, and comment below. Comment below. Let us know your experience with small business financing. What, what was your challenges? Did you succeed? Do you finance your business on a, on a permanent basis, on a, on a gradual basis? Do you do it occasionally or that's just a way of life? Let us know. Let the whole Sweaty Kiwi community know how you get things done. Because I think you are a winner and we love winners around here, right? Speaking of winners, we are giving a big f- f- shout out to Ben Mark in Cooperstown, North Dakota. Ben Martin, thank you, sir, and family, for your suggestions and the most support, support and encouragement. Ben Martin, Cooperstown, North Dakota. Joe Atkinson in South North Dakota. And Sarah Rees in Lark, North Dakota. Thank you, Ben. Thank you, Joe. And thank you, Sarah. We love you and we love your families. Thank you. Now, let's talk about 
the pros and cons of Virgin Cash Advance. Now, like most financing arrangements, there are pros and cons to a Merchant Cash Advance, right? Now, business owners generally use a Merchant Cash Advance if they have been rejected by their bank or other traditional lenders for a business loan. This is very important. So, a Merchant Cash Advance is usually is generally used by business owners who have been rejected by their bank or other traditional lenders for a business loan. So if you are in a similar situation, you know, you might want to consider yeah, a merchant cash advance, right? Because the repayment terms are based on automatically deducted payments. So they are easier to get, right? So you set up a, an ACH scheme with your bank where you are paying the, the the merchant on a daily basis sometimes on a weekly basis but it's mostly on a daily basis so if you've been rejected by your bank and you think that you have you just you just uh, in financial straits right now consider a merchant cash advance now let me kind of break down for you the advantages and the the drawbacks of this financing option first advantages they are fast. A merchant cash advance is one of the fastest loan available, right? Average turnaround for most business owners is just a few days. We've seen 48 hours. So the decision is, waste, is weighted most heavily upon the credit card records of the company. So there is a limited amount of uh, paperwork. So that in, in return, accelerate the decision making process, right? And, the, and one of the pros here is that Poor credit is often accepted, right? Because think about it, the lenders get paid directly from credit card receipts, so there is less default risk, right? So therefore, credit ratings are relatively less important. Now, the cash advance is unsecured, right? So a merchant cash advance is an, an, an unsecured loan, so you don't need to pledge collateral and the good thing also is you're not personally liable in the event the company is unable to, to repay the loan. That's another biggie, right? And the fourth thing here, the fourth advantage here is that payments are correlated to the health of the business. So because think about it, because you pay a percentage of sales. So you pay less when sales are lower or, you know, business is just slow. So you have less revenue. So less revenue, smaller payments, and more when the business is good. So more revenue, higher payment. So think about it. Payments are correlated to the health of the business. So less revenue, smaller payments, more revenue, higher payments. That's a big advantage right there, right? Now, let's talk about the disadvantages of a merchant cash advance here, because there are many. <laughs> now. A merchant cash advance is an expensive form of financing. The APR, the annual percentage rate, or the total annual borrowing cost, if you would think if you put together all the fees and the interest, the, the fee here, I want you to pay attention. Don't, don't sleep on me now. Don't snore on me right now because uh, I'm, I'm about to drop an important, an important number here. Are you ready? Drum roll, drum roll, drum roll. The APR and total funding cost for a merchant cash advance may range from 40% to 375%. Depending on the lender, the size of the advance, any extra fees, the amount of time it takes to repay the, the, the advance in full, and the strength of the business credit card sales. Did you hear the number? Did you hear the number? Did you hear the number? 40% to 375%. Let's just run it up. Let's just round it. Let's just say it's 50% to 500%. That's kind of crazy and that's scary too. So this is far more expensive than any other alternative business funding methods here. So a merchant cash advance is generally known as the most expensive for any any kind of borrowing plans here but again it's very easy to get them 
right? And you you have less revenue, smaller payments, and more revenue, higher payments. So you have some kind of flexibility around the payments there. But yeah, it is just very, very, very high. Now, the second drawback here is that higher sales often means a higher APR. So if you agree to repay your merchant cash advance as a percentage of credit card sales, the APR may depend not just on the total fees paid, but also on the pace at which you repay the loan, right? This, this just makes sense. So if your sales are weak, if your if the if business is slow, your payments will be lower and it will take you a longer period to repay. In that case, your APR drops. However, if credit card sales are high and you repay the merchant cash advance faster and subsequently APR goes up, right? So that's really the thing you have to really think about. Let's just, another, another drawback here is that there is no savings if you prepay. Because you're paying a fixed amount as a, as a percentage of sales, you get no interest savings if you prepay. Another thing here is another drawback is that there is little, and this is a biggie folks, this is a biggie. There is little or no regulation. You know, so we are trying to get it. I, I think right now we are in, we may be, I can't, I can't say for sure, but there, there is a risk that we get into loan shark territory. Let me rephrase that. I'm not saying that merchant, a merchant cash advance is a loan shark option here or loan shark scheme. What I'm saying here is that because there is little or no regulation, a loan shark might be equated in some cases to a not a loan shark here a merchant cash advance might be equated in some cases to a loan shark scheme right because it is not considered a loan a merchant cash advance is not covered by federal government regulations like most other loan types a merchant cash advance is treated as a commercial transaction and in most cases it is subject to general uniform commercial code, the UCC rules. So the bottom line here is that business owners must exercise extreme diligence when entering into such an agreement. The last but not the least drawback here is that a merchant cash advance contract can be complex and convoluted. So if you have such a contract First of all, you want to you want to make sure that you have an attorney around you because while there is a relatively little paperwork, a merchant cash advance can come with complex legalese. It is therefore wise to reach out and hire an attorney or at the very least carefully read the contract before signing. I personally will advise you to to, to hire an attorney because unless you have a PhD in law or spend years of graduate studies at a law school, the legalese that is in those type of contract is more complicated than you can ever imagine. So hire a lawyer and make yourself, you know, have someone who is well versed in the subtleties of merchant uh, contract, uh, mer merchant cash advances, and that person, that expert, can guide you. We will be right back right after this. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> Welcome back, folks, to another uh, section of Sweet Kiwi. I hope you are doing fantastic that you're still around with us. We are talking about how to make money, how to borrow, how to how to expand your business, and this is in a very this is a very interesting topic and a very critical topic too because. Without money, you cannot expand it as a small business owner. And uh, with uh, with money, you could do a lot of things, but you have to know how to get the how to get the loan, how to get financing at a very cheap, 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 cheap cost. Now, if you just join us right now, we are talking about something very interesting. We are talking about, I mean, financing tips and tricks for small businesses. 
In preparing for this show, we spoke to 17 private bankers who have experience in business funding, traditional loan and mezzanine loan structuring, working capital expansion, term financing and company acquisition. After that, we have compiled tips and tricks from these experienced bankers along with small business funding secrets we uncovered during our own research. So here we are talking about small business credit secrets, how to get your business funded fast after applying for a business line of credit, SBA loan, unsecured term loan, credit card, business acquisition loan, equipment financing, or merchant cash advance. Now, let's quickly get into, we, we just covered merchant cash advances. Now we wanna talk about something that is also very, very important. And that is unsecured business loan. Unsecured business loan. Now, unsecured business loans are a type of business financing that does not require the borrower to pledge collateral, such as equipment, real estate, or inventory, right? So you don't have to pledge anything. Now, this type of loan is issued solely on the borrower's credit worthiness. So it's very important to understand. So everything falls on you as a small business owner. So unsecured business loans are also known as signature loans or personal loans, even though they are used for business purposes. The, the thing here is that according to the, to the SBA, approximately 73% of small businesses make use of outside financing. It is also estimated that small business borrowing from banks alone totaled 600 billion they totaled 600 billion on average right with an almost equal amount provided by finance companies and private investors so the good things to know here is that there is a lot of money out there for someone who is ambitious uh an entrepreneur who is ambitious and who knows how to, how to use the cash so many of these loans are provided as unsecured loans to small business owners and what it does is that those, those loans act upon, essentially they act upon the faith and credit of the borrower. This is why again, they're called signature loans, right? You can, as a business owner, benefit greatly from this kind of lending. One thing you wanna make sure is that you want to evaluate the dangers. You wanna evaluate the risks versus the rewards for before engaging in that kind of contract right so let's just break it down for you here in terms of uh, what those things are if you take an unsecured loan in other words a loan with no collateral uh no collateral this could make or break your company right this can be this this can make all the differences in the future of your company. You can use the cash to grow, to expand. You can use the cash to gain market share. You can use the, the, the cash to order more, more products, provide more services, that kind of stuff. If you're looking to purchase new equipment, you know, an extra source of capital can make these changes a lot more sound and viable. For example, uh, before I even talk about examples here, I know I said earlier that the borrower does not need to pledge any company asset, right? But, and this is a big but, lenders will require a personal guarantee from the borrower. So, you know, even though the business is getting an unsecured loan, the owner isn't left off the hook the the owner has to you know basically have skin in the game so if you're looking to purchase equipment for instance and you want to get unsecured business loan the bank will require a personal guarantee from you that means the lender can seize your personal asset in the event of default so of course, these loans are not secured by collateral, right? So they carry a higher rate of interest compared to a secure loan. The loan amount can be lower. And the thing is that the unsecured business loans usually generally require the borrower to have 
excellent credit. So again, the borrower needs to have a skin in the game, specifically the individual owner of the business. Now, so the bottom line here is that you can get your, your money, but it is important for you to know the conditions. You need to know the you need to know the eligibility requirements. Now, unsecured business loans are difficult to get. Let's just let's just clarify that fact ASAP. They are difficult to get because you know lenders simply need the security of collateral right so you know it's a hard fat of being an entrepreneur so and that's you know there's a reason why a lot of uh, the majority of new businesses fail right within the first two years and and lenders want to have this sort of uh, this sort of collateral and if they don't have it they just say listen we want to have a guarantee on the personal on the personal side now small business loans from banks are can be a challenge so not only the loans are difficult to get, it can also be a challenge in terms of the application because banks are looking at this types of loans as very risky, especially for startups. Now, the problem is startups are the ones who need the cash more, right? They're the one who needs uh, cash the most because they, they have an idea, they have an R&D, they have a they have spent money on uh, on R and D. They now need some cash to go to market, to deploy the market, and possibly start scaling the product, scaling the business model. That's where you need cash. And if you don't have VC funding, venture capital, or private equity, whatever it is, whatever, if you don't have an alternative type of uh, VC, you know, then you uh, an alternative type of financing. That's what I meant. You need to get a loan. And it's not always easy. It's not always easy, right? So those are things that you need to know about the um, the the unsecured business loan. Now the question, there's another question here: is is an unsecured business loan right for your company? Now at the SBA, the Small Business Administration has has done a re, has done a survey not long ago, where it asked people, it asked entrepreneurs companies how companies how do you fund business growth so in seeking business financing for your company it's helpful to understand how the majority of small businesses in the United States and Canada go about it and so the thing here is that the SBA has found that the top three sources of expansion capital for businesses in the United States and Canada were personal savings which is really a surprise but this is you got to use your own money so personal savings business profits and assets that's the second category and the third category is personal credit cards so you can see that bank loans were not even the top three now bank loans were number four but it just means that a lot of and the majority of businesses don't expand they just do not expand because of limited availability of cash, right? So personal savings, business profits and assets, and the, 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 the third one is personal credit cards. So this is actually the, the overview of the unsecured business loan. And the idea here is that it's, it's just very, very tough to get. It requires the, the, the owner to pledge his or her own assets and he or she must have stellar a stellar credit report we'll be right back right after this welcome back folks to another edition of sweetie kiwi i hope that you are having fun so far <laughs> i am having fun we're talking about we are talking about small business financing small business funding and we want to pay attention to us an, an important element here and before we talk about other key details about unsecured loans let's quickly talk about let's quickly give a shout out to our fans we have a uh, wonderful fans throughout the whole world and uh today we are having we want to give a shout out to our fans and listeners and uh, and viewers in russia so uh, excuse my pronunciation I really I'm trying to work on my Russian 101 I have I didn't graduate there from the, I didn't graduate from that class. 
himself, Zutov Lubomir Kirilovich, from Olsk, Russia, Chipperin Sergei Borisovich, in Omsk, Russia, Mukanova Ina Emelianovna, in Omsk, Russia. Thank you so much, Zutov, Chipperin, and Mukanova. We really appreciate your help from uh, your help and support and encouragement from Omsk in Russia. Thank you so much. Now, let's talk about other key details here about uh, unsecured loans. Now, let's let's look at the benefits and disadvantages of unsecured business loans. The benefits are that you have access to cash. There are no collateral requirements at the business level. The disadvantages here is that the, the high the, those types of loans come with higher interest rates. They require a personal guarantee. The loan amount is usually lower and it requires excellent credit from the business but also from the owner. So applying for, for an unsecured business loan may be the only alternative for some business owners to finance expansion or business operations. However, it has limitations, right? And and as I said earlier, it's if you really think about it, it's not really unsecured because most lenders will require a personal guarantee. So, and, and, and in addition, like a merchant cash advance, an unsecured business loan usually carries a higher rate of interest than other types of loans. So when you apply for an unsecured business loan, right, you want to pay attention to a few things here because Again, as I just said two minutes ago, a truly, 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 truly unsecured business loan is virtually non-existent, doesn't happen, right? So as a business owner, you know, the lending landscape, the lending industry could be a little confusing at times. And, and, and of course, there are loan sharks, there are bad actors in the loan business, and you want to use common sense when shopping around, right? You, the last thing you want is getting caught in in a scheme with exorbitant interest rates and risk losing your business or personal assets, right? So one thing that is very important is that if you are offered an unsecured loan that looks too good to be true, it probably, probably is. If it looks too good to be true, chances are it is too good to be true. So here is a, here are a few things you should look for when evaluating, you know, when assessing an unsecured loan, what is the total interest rate, right? We're talking here about APR. Again, as I said earlier, you want to become a PhD in APR. You want to understand this thing so well that nobody can trick you so well that when you wake up at two in the morning and go into the bathroom for a biological break, you would remember what APR means. You would know the ins and outs of APR. So what is the total interest rate? It's very important now. The loan, does the loan require you to pledge a personal guarantee? So you really wanna get that. You really want to understand what are this loan scheme asking you in return? And please read the fine print. I don't care if you need to buy a magnifier or change your glasses or ask the, the lender to send you the documents using 18 or 20 or 25 font size, whatever it is, if they had to increase the font size, please make them make them do this and read the fine prints. If you're borrowing 100,000, chances are you can spare 30 minutes to read the fine prints in the documents you are about to sign. If you don't, if you don't understand legalese, hire someone who speaks legalese every day, and that would be an attorney, a lawyer, right? Get help. You want to shop around. Also, you want to get several offers because rates, conditions, funding options can vary widely from lender to lender, right? We are in a market 
system we are in an open economy let competition play in your favor look for the terms UCC or blanket lien in the fine print and understand the implications now UCC as I said earlier is universal commercial code you want to read that and you want to understand now again depending upon the contract you're about to sign it's always good to have a lawyer around you right and the last thing you want to do which is also very critical here is you want to check the reputation of the lender this is very important you want you want to contact your state's department of banking to find out if this lender is legit that's the bottom line before you sign a contract that would sort of commit you over several years you want to check the the reputation of the of the lender so this is really about it in terms of uh, uh, unsecured loans and what you need to do to move forward in your life in your career and in your business we'll be right back right after this don't go away welcome back folks we are still around talking about ka-ching 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 this is the, this show is about business we want to get you the money you need we want to give you advice that will help you move forward we want to tell you things you need the little things that you need to to be to crush the competition to fund your business to expand to grow to get the things done in a clear and quick way now before we move forward if you just join us right now if you are asking yourself what are we talking about we are talking about great ways great tips and tricks where you can fund your business and fund your business the right way without breaking your bank right so we've talked about several several types of business acquisition now we are talking about business acquisition loans business acquisition loans a business acquisition loan enables you to do what to buy an existing business so that is a business that has already been established and that has been uh, operated for a while right so you can use that loan also to acquire or open a new franchise location i was talking earlier about you know if you have a new mcdonald that you want to to open in your neighborhood because you believe that a lot of folks will love will love eating that food then you can use a business acquisition loan to acquire or open a new franchise location. You can also use this type of loan to buy out a partner in a business you currently own. Now, the business business acquisition loans have an array of options. You know, the amount of funding, the, the cost of borrowing, I'm talking about the APR, the, the fees will largely depend on the industry sector of the business you're trying to acquire right the balance sheet of the target company and of course very important your personal credit history whether you are in the 600s or in the 400s right so getting a loan to buy a business can get complicated i mean really it can get it can it can get complicated and it usually takes longer than other types of business loans really sometimes it can go all the all the way from to i mean two years two years um 18 months to 24 months is the average but it could be longer depending on the industry you're in the states where you're operating from and the the type of business right so let's quickly get into what we're talking about here so one thing you want to hear is that when you want to acquire a business the first step is to identify the right type of loan program right so basically one thing you need to understand is there are no loans that are specifically geared towards business acquisitions. In other words, there is no loan out there. Like lenders don't say, oh, this loan is only for business acquisition, right? Because if you think about it, how often does a business get acquired in the, in the United States on a daily basis? So if banks have to build an entire operation, an entire business model around business acqu acquisition, how much money are they gonna make? Are they gonna make, right? So 
There are no loans that are that are designed specifically for business acquisition. Now, there are several options, however, for loan types that are most commonly used for the purposes of acquiring a business, selling selling a business, restructuring a business, right? So let's try let's go let, let's just explore those those uh, options. So you have a traditional bank loan. So that's the term loan, right? So this is the most basic form of loan. So the borrower receives a lump sum. It could be 1 million or 10 million. It's a lump sum dis disbursement from a lending institution. And the borrower agrees to pay the amount back over the term of the loan at an agreed upon rate of interest, right? So that's pretty straightforward. We've talked about another option is equipment financing we've talked about that in the early in the earlier ver in the earlier section of this show so equipment financing is really you know it's a really a, a small business loan that is used primarily to purchase business equipment like you know vehicles machinery computers right so business owners can use the new equipment as collateral for the loan we talked about that an SBA loan. We also talked about an SBA loan. Now, there is something called rollover for startup businesses. Now, and those are called ROPs, of course. <laughs> it's really sort of, you know, sarcastic uh, word here, but ROPs. So, ROPs, those, the rollover for startup businesses allow you to use the funds from a qualified retirement account, such as a 401k or IRA and roll over the investment into your company you own. So technically, it's not considered borrowing from your retirement account. It simply allows for entrepreneurs to use their business as the tax deferred investment. Another thing you need to think about is here is that if you want to secure a business acquisition loan, it's, it's important to think about this. Now, we, uh, hopefully now you understand what a business acquisition loan is let's examine some of the details here if you have ever applied for this sort of loan you probably know that the the, the, the bank has reviewed your personal finances right as well as the finances and credit history of the business so the the the, the lender is looking at two separate tables your personal table so that is your finances and your credit history including your tax returns and the business table so looking at the same thing so the finances of the other business the business businesses credit history and the businesses tax return so in an acquisition situation the lender sometimes will also look at the current finances of the target businesses here so we have three tables from two tables we now move on to three so the lender some lenders can be very conservative and what they do is they require up to five years of past financial and bank statements or more to ensure that the business you are purchasing is viable right so this is very important because the 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 the, the, the bottom line here is that for a buyer that's just bonanza right if you are the buyer you are comfortable you just relax and you just go you you can you can take a trip and go to acapulco and get a nice stain while the bank is doing the work on your behalf because having the bank audit the company you are about to acquire it's really it's it's really synonymous with just getting free advice because you are getting a professional second set of eyes in the financial due diligence process because the banks doesn't want the bank does not want to advance money onto something that is not legit. So they will you 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 bet they will bring all the big all the biggies. They'll bring all the big auditors and all the big you know financial experts to kind of help you. So that's a win-win for the bank and for yourself. So if you are granted a loan for the business acquisition, you know for sure that the lender also thinks this is a sound business decision, right? And and if you ever get denied guess what this is a great opportunity also because you can realize that there was a lot of risk associated with that business in the first place right and or maybe it's just a good opportunity to renegotiate the purchase price you can go back to the business seller and say listen i think your model is not as sound as you 
made me believe it, it was. So let's just cut down the price to 75% of the original of the original price or 50%. So this is just the bonanza for you. Another thing that you have to really uh, remember here is that to to there are some documents that are that are required for a business acquisition loan, especially for the business being acquired. You have things like balance sheet, the tax return, and the gross and net profit margins. Those are very important elements to present in a business acquisition loan. Again, this is for the business being acquired, not your own business. We will be right back right after this. Welcome back, folks, to another edition of Sweet Kiwi. I am very happy that you are still around and you are still part of this adventure, this conversation about business loans. Well, today, we are talking about several ways that businesses can, can, can borrow, get the money they need to move forward. Before we, before we um, get into the nitty gritty here, I want to give a, a faint shout out to Lei Ling in China, in Shenzhen, China. Hu Chao in Shenzhen, China, and Zhu Xi in Shenzhen, China. Lai, Hu, and Zhu, thank you so much for uh, for your contribution, for your support. We're just very happy that you know. I mean, this is isn't that beautiful? <laughs> this is beautiful. I thought we only had viewers and listeners in the United States and Canada, and now I'm hearing that we have we have viewers and listeners and and um, fans in Shenzhen, China. That's just beautiful. Thank you so much for uh, for your support, for uh, your contribution, for your help, for your encouragement. We really appreciate that. If you also are listening to us, please consider subscribing to our channel so you don't miss any any new shows. Like the like the content, share it, comment below, give us your, your feedback about small business funding and we'll appreciate it and we'll get back to you as soon as possible. Now, how do you succeed in getting a business acquisition loan? Now, we've talked about what it is and how to how the, the how the banks is helping you. Make sure you're getting something good here. How do you succeed in getting such a loan? Now, the first thing you want to do is you want to provide you want to you want to argue in favor of your your business acquisition loan. You want to really, really, you know, explain to the lender through the financials, through the business plan. You want to explain to the lender that this idea, this concept, this model that you are about to buy is viable and is bankable. In other words, you want to tell the bank that, you know what, the the the, the company you're buying is not only financially sound, but the acquisition relates to your your existing operations or that it will optimize your existing business you need to tell the the, the bank why you are why you're trying to acquire the business because you have to understand lenders are very conservative by nature right they are very wary of granting a business acquisition loan if they feel that the acquired business is not a great fit so you want to prepare for you want to prepare a good story a great story to tell the banker why you wish to acquire an existing business and why you think that the finances are favorable to support a loan one thing that is also very important that we've seen while talking to private bankers is that it is very noteworthy to have something called an acquisition business plan so this is not just a this goes beyond a regular a traditional business plan you need to create something called a, uh, an acquisition business plan now this type of business plan is just a great narrative whereby you explain how acquiring an existing company will grow your own company will grow the acquirer the company buying the buyer so the plan should this business plan should include an array of details, including how you intend to integrate the two companies. So, you know, you're talking about a, an acquisition. So there has to be a merger here, right? How you integrate the two companies, how you intend to increase sales, 
how you intend to cut costs, and in general, how in general you are able to inject more efficiency and more effectiveness in your operation. This is what I call operational synergy, how you are able to take two companies that are very different or they're similar and you are able to, to extract, you are able to combine them to have a combo that in the end produces operational synergy, operational energy, operational harmony and how you make money. You'll need to explain why it's important for you to acquire the business versus building the operation internally, right? So this is very important because bankers want to see whether you have a strong rationale for the buy versus the build decision. Buy versus build. Boo boo. Boo boo. Boo boo. Buy and buy versus build. <laughs> right? Now, it's also very important to say that for you to succeed in getting a business acquisition loan, you want to get the acquisition valuation correctly. Now, th th there are a lot of ways to do this, right? You can just, you can basically just look at the balance sheet of the uh, of the company you want to buy and, and just do what they call um, asset minus liability and see how much the, the company is really, is, really, uh, is really worth. I would recommend to hire a specialist, to hire an appraiser, a business appraiser, right? You can even hire a professional accountant, for instance, a CPA, a certified public accountant who has, who has experience in acquisition valuation so that you are sure that you're, you're not overpaying for a business, right? Because needless to say, in some cases you pay to a in some cases, the price that you are ultimately paying to a car a company is, if you think about it, the most important financial component, right? So the lenders anyway will want to get an independent valuation be before they advance the money. So this is very important. So you want to look at things like marketplace viability, cash flows, life cycle analysis, the strength of the value chain. So I'm talking about things like suppliers, suppliers of the distribution companies, logistics, uh, clients, that kind of stuff. You want to have, that's why you want to have an independent auditor to render an opinion on the buyer's industry expertise and ability to expand and add value to the new entity post acquisition. And CPAs are great for that, right? You can also hire a, um, business appraisers. This sort of expertise you need. You really, you can't try to save money on that. Don't even try. Another thing that you want to think about if you want your um, your business acquisition loan application to be approved quickly is to have to think about management expertise right so this the assessment of the management expertise is, a, is an essential component of the valuation section so lenders will want to lenders want to know whether you or your top management are qualified to run the acquired business as or more effectively than its previous owners so the thing here is that you can basically keep the previous owners after buying the company so they run the company for you or you can hire other people, right? Or you can run the company yourself. So if you do not possess the, re the required skills to operate the acquired company personally as the owner, you will be well advised to show that you can attract and retain top talent to do so, or take such a person as a partner. Either way, you need to convince the bank, the lender that you have thought about management, you've thought about talent management right and the last thing you also want to think about here is the pro forma revenue projections pro forma income assumptions this is very important because the lender wants to know you know what kind of uh, future revenue and expense projections you have and and they might want to have this over several months and years we've seen in practice that some banks some lenders will will ask you to do a 10-year pro forma pro forma revenue projection 10-year and some will even ask you to do this over a monthly basis. So you're talking about 120 months, 120 months of revenue projections. So because the bottom line here is that 
the banks want to have an idea of the management vision to grow the company. So anytime you have projections, make sure that you accompany their projections with a brief narrative to justify any increases in revenue or a significant reduction in cost over the reviewed period. So in the example I just gave you, if you are talking about 10 years, that is 120, 120 months, you want to have a narrative that explain why you went from one number to another uh, if you were if you were increasing the, you know the growth rate of the growth rate of uh, revenues from month to month or from year to year what justifies that this sort of narrative will help you will increase your chances of getting your lo your business acquisition loan approved and if it is approved what do you have Ka-ching, 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 ka-ching in the bank. <laughs> we'll be right back right after this. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> Welcome back, folks. We are still here, and we are about to wrap up this uh, this 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 show. Today's show, we've talked about a lot of things. And uh, just for those who, just, uh, who are just joining the show right now, this show was about financing tips and tricks for small businesses in preparing for this show we spoke for we spoke with 17 private bankers who have extensive experience in business funding traditional loan and mezzanine loan structuring working capital expansion term financing and company acquisition we have compiled tips and tricks from these experienced bankers along with small business funding secrets we uncovered ourselves during our research so we've talked about a lot of things here and we're going to wrap it up here and tell you what we actually talked about so we talked about for example sba loans we talked about equipment financing business lines of credits we talked about merchant cash advance unsecured business loans and business acquisition loans let me repeat that sba loans business lines of credits equipment financing merchant cash advance unsecured business loan and business acquisition loan now this is very important uh, as as you all know we, we always have a call to action because we believe that Having the right type of information is really important, right? But information without action is just pure lethargy here. And we believe that information coupled with action is super powerfulness. I don't even know if that word exists, but it's omnipotence. It's super powerful. You can do everything here. So this is where I want you to do today. Today, to get your business off the ground, to, 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 to move, to start moving, to get things moving. Keep your documents in order. Transparency into the financial state of your business is an absolute must. Maintain good credit. Know which type of loan you need, right? We've talked about all this loan, the SBA, the business line of, business line of credit, equipment financing, so on and so forth. Know which type of loan you need. Demonstrate sufficient cash flow and understand that every bank is different. This is this is very important. Now, today's pro tip is very very is critical, right? You want to really get to that to that level because we've talked about a lot of things, but I do have some pro tips for you today and today's pro tip is this. Well, before we talk about the, the tip, we'll be right back right after this. <laughs> This is today's pro tip. Demonstrate how you intend to use the funds. Anytime you apply for a small business loan or a financing option, demonstrate how you intend to use the funds. Polish your business plan and executive summary. Know your ROI before borrowing. Consider, if needed, crowdfunding, crowdfunding platforms, right? And last but not least, invest in accounting software. This was it, folks. Thank you so much for sticking around. I will see you next. Stay 
marvelous. And I will see you next time. Thank you.